My name is Schwan Park. I am Max's father. I am Miki Park. I'm Max Park's mother. Their competitiveness is fierce. I mean, fierce, fierce. I mean, you can put it up against any sports athlete. You can see that they're cut from the same cloth, that they have this really com fierce competitive um, uh, strive to be number one. My name is Patrick Ponce, and I formerly held the single solve world record for the Rubik's Cube. For the final at SkullCon, I was paired with Max Park, who is a very, very good speed cuber. He is second in the world for the average record, which means like for consistency's sake, he is the second best cuber in the world. So first person to get three wins was the winner. So I like eyes were all on us. Let's begin solve one. All right, Patrick takes solve one, 6.71 against 7.10. We went back and forth. So the first solve I won by just a second, and then Max won. Unfortunate corner twist there. Max takes that one, 6.50. And then he won again. All right, Max advances to match point, 5.99 to 7.15, two to one. And for the fourth attempt, I, I was on my last turn at maybe five seconds, and when I went to stop the timer, the timer malfunctioned. All right, we're gonna have to do a resolve on that one, unfortunately. We had an unfortunate timer reset for Patrick. We had to do an extra attempt. All right, we're gonna be moving into a, a solve five. Patrick takes the fourth one. And Max takes it 5.78 against 6.07. What an exciting final. I think the most amazing thing in cubing is that everyone is accepted. Like Max Park has autism and that doesn't deter him from being so good at what he does. And I don't think other communities are as good of facilitating that as cubing is. Originally, we never started cubing because of cubing. We started cubing because of Max's autism. You're really primarily working on one thing, which is um, a socialization. And in order to do some socialization, you need somebody around to socialize with. So uh, we were going to go to the cubing competition to teach him how to stand in line and wait his turn and look uh, directly at, at somebody and say, I'm ready, which is a big thing, looking at somebody and, and, and pointing and things like that. Really, him becoming good at cubing was just an afterthought. It w actually wasn't even c uh, considered. It wasn't even important. He, at the time, fine motor skill was not there, so he cannot. He couldn't open the water bottles, and we had a Rubik's cube around our house, and he kind of showing um, interest. So uh, at the time, you know, there was YouTube video, so I learned first. And then I taught him, and the next day he was beating me. <laughs> One day, at his very second competition, he won. And we were Surprise. pretty surprised. I mean, we, we thought they made a mistake, because he was competing against kids that were like college graduates from MIT and Cal Caltech. And, and here's this 10-year-old boy beating him. And we were thinking, I think that there's a mistake. But we never thought that it would take him so far up to the point now that you know, um, he's world being sponsored. Records. Yeah, he's getting world records. He's being sponsored to travel all over the world. And, you know, this is just uh, all new territory for his mother and me. The biggest thing we noticed uh, about Max before he started cubing and after was the wanting to speak with somebody else. Um, when he comes to these competitions, of course, he knows instinctively everybody's there because they all have the same interests. That has tremendously increased his awareness and, and, and his um, ability to speak with other people. When we went to the World Championship and Max, Max won, and um, you know, of course we were very, very proud of that, but um, the big, big, big success story for us was he did this thing where he got the certificate and he was looking at the people next to him and he was adjusting his certificate to be like everybody else. Because that's something that we want as autistic our autistic kids to do is to to reference somebody else he's you know me and we're like me and mickey are like did you see him adjust his like, yeah he adjusted this he, he looked over there and he adjusted the certificate just like them and you know so that was like the reward for us so
The Cuban community did more than just accept Max. I've never met a group of people than the Cuban community that is just a perfect representation of the utopian society. If somebody actually does a solve, and if the judge writes down the wrong time, the competitor will say, oh, I'm sorry, you made a mistake. I, my, sec my time is two seconds longer. You, made it, you put the wrong number down. It, it's so hard to explain how genuine and how um, honest, honest and, and, and disciplined and just, just good people in general this Cuban community is. Pretty sure Max was the one who started the trend in the Cuban world to doing AO 100. It, it means average of 100, 100 so you solves. You solve 100 solves and then pick it out the best and you know worst and then every job. I remember the first time we went to um, Worlds. Um, yeah. So who does AO 100? Yeah, everybody was like joking, like going, yeah, you know, Max was going around asking people, "What is your AO 100 average?" Now the AO 100 is a marker a badge of honor and a marker for how good you truly are now in the Cuban community. I think that he's had an influence in the, in the Cuban community of, you know, like setting the standard for what you, you know, should do in order to best help yourself to succeed in this environment. Max is going to be incredibly happy to be in the Guinness World Record book because his whole life is about being number one and being the best and, and, and quantifying, uh, and that being quantifiable. So. To see his own name in the ranks of the best is going to be just amazing for him. And his motto is, don't think, just solve.